Okay, for this question, they are asking you to complete the square. They want you to rewrite this expression in the completed square form, where your x is inside a bracket with a number, then the bracket is being squared, and then all other numbers put outside. So, when we look at the expression that we have, we read the first two terms, the x squared term and the x term. From these two terms, we know that the completed square is going to look like x. And how to get this number? This number is this number in front of x divided by 2. So negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Trisha, when I'm talking, you listen, you look at your PLD, then later you go back, wasting my time. Okay? So we already know from these two terms that our completed square is going to look like this. If we go and expand x minus 3 square, we are going to get x square minus 6x plus 9. Meaning I want to write a completed square x minus 3 square, I need x square, I need minus 6x, I need 9. But what I have now, is x squared minus 6x plus 2. I don't have the plus 9 to make this a completed square. So what I need to do is to plus 9 myself. But if I plus 9, I am changing the question. So plus 9, I must minus 9. So that plus 9 minus 9 adds up to 0. I am not changing the question. The plus 2 is still here. This part is 0. But I purposely write plus 9 minus 9. So that I have this term, this term, and this term. So with these three terms, I can say that this 3 is actually x minus 3 squared. And then what is left outside are the numbers minus 9 plus 2 is minus 7. So this is the completing the square method, okay? And to answer the question, the question has x plus something inside the bracket. I have x minus something. So to look exactly like what the question is asking for, x minus 3 can be written as x plus negative 3. Minus 7, they want plus, Minus 7 can be written as plus uh, negative 7. Then by comparing, I can answer that A is negative 3. B is negative 7. Huh?